have a tobacco barn. Does anybody know what an old tobacco barn looked like? I grew up with those. Yeah. yeah, the purpose was so you could slow dry things without losing a lot. And of course, we, we want to lose a lot of tobacco nowadays, but um, the concept is good. I know. And they even heat dried some. I know when I was growing up in North Carolina, they used a lot of heaters to, to speed along the process. But we don't, and heat's not great. You can dry in an oven, and a lot of times on the websites, UGA and University of Minnesota, the big people who tell you how to can and dry will say you can dry in a low heat oven, about 160 degrees, leave it in overnight, um, and then pull it out the next day. You can, and you'll smell it all through the house. Why? Because when you heat dry, you're losing the ester. And so if an emergency comes and I need oregano to go in a blend or something, I'll heat dry, but not usually. So, like the last couple of weeks, we've been air drying like crazy, and things dry pretty quickly. The savory you saw from the back garden is a two-day dry. Calumet's a two-day dry. Rosemary's about a five or six-day dry under good conditions. And why do we dry on stem? Because again, we're going to reserve ester if we dry on stem. What did I tell you about the dentata, the French lavender leaf? It's the stem that has all the oil. Right, it has 40% of the oil. So if you dry on stem, you're going to retain a lot of that. Um, you can even grind some of the stems if you want to use them fine ground. So dry on stem when you can. And um, I'm going to have Alexis give everybody a little piece of um, dry rosemary. And we've taken it off here. Rosemary is one of the key components of many of the Southern European herb blends. We do a rosemary lemon verbena blend with oregano that's a really great, more Italian blend. And the one we do today, of course, is a French blend, which is Herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence came from South France, and it's used not only on meats, but on vegetables and all kinds of things. So it's one of those things you can pull out and just kind of throw on everything. You might ask me, why did I give you such a simple recipe? And it is a very simple recipe because it has some concepts there that you want to use. With meat, if you don't like the fat, trim after you cook or reserve the skin and trim that after you cook because you get a lot of flavor from the skin even if you don't want to eat the skin. And when you're doing an herbs de Provence with chicken, you want to actually tuck those herbs underneath and around the skin. And later you can lose all that if you want to. Um, but that helps you retain flavor because again, aroma with herbs is all about adding it at the right time or helping it to hold on to those volatile oils. So one way to cook for a longer time with herbs is to put it underneath the skin, underneath the roast, uh, underneath the potatoes, mm. or inside, if, if you like to use an oven cooking bag, and now most of them are BPA free, so they're okay to use again, I guess. We never know what's okay to use and what's not. Aluminum we know is not okay to use. Um, but you do an oven cooking bag and you'll retain all the ester in your savory potatoes if you do a rosemary potato, or if you do an herbs de Provence potato or roasted vegetables. And I'll just lay those in a pan, kind of in a single layer, and put that in there with them. Huh. And it's easy and it looks complicated after you bring it out, but it's really simple to do, and so is this one. And this is this is rosemary. That's rosemary. And the reason I give it to you is because there's a wrong and a right way to take it off stem, and mainly to save your hands. But what you want to do, it's like brushing an animal. You want to go with the fur, so you're going to go with the rosemary this way. And, huh. and so that's your. That's like, if you go the opposite direction, you can try it. You're going to hit all the little spikes and spurs on the rosemary. <laughs> yeah. So you, it's like brushing a cat with the rosemary. That's not the case with all herbs. And so I'm going to show you time. And let's, I think that's enough to get everybody to do. And we've been drying these. Time, it takes a lot of, so you need to grow in advance thinking about the fact that you're going to need a lot if you're going to use thyme and things. Thyme has particular flavor and it's, um, the thyme all in it is actually quite antiseptic and it's antifungal. Uh, they also think it may uh, stop some large cell protozoa. So you're actually getting some benefit from eating thyme as well. If you're going to throw herbs on something that you're not tucking or covering, you want to do it in the last 15 to 20 minutes of cooking to retain some of those qualities. In the Ukraine, 
where there was no money for a while. They were washing, you know how you see all those apartment buildings that look like they're just a big block of concrete? Now you think of the Ukraine as being countryside and all that, but there are lots of cities. And they couldn't afford uh, mold treatment. So they used thyme and vinegar. And the thyme all in the time was actually very good for the mold. And so they did some research with that. It's a really good piece of research. Huh. So thyme in vinegar is a great cleanser as well. And you can also use rosemary in vinegar as a cleanser. Acetic acid by itself is about 60% bactericidal. We all think vinegar kills everything, but it doesn't. So if you add a little bit of rosemary or thyme in your vinegar bottle, if you're using it to clean, then you're adding some potency. So you actually get a little bit more going on there. So I guess over time we've all, um, all cultures have learned how to use herbs in one way or another. So with that one, <coughs> real easy to rub off, but you can see it takes a lot. Yeah. So, and now if you take the rosemary and the thyme in your hands and kind of smell what you've got going on there, and we need to pass everybody a little coffee. Mm. So if, if I'm using, I quite often do roasted vegetables in the oven, if, if I want to use my, my herbs and that, do I need to wait till they're fresh or do I need to wait till the last 15 minutes? If you're cooking uncovered. Now like in a lay crusade pot, um, where you've got a ceramic inner lining, or I use my Lake Crusade pot a lot for roasting vegetables too. Then, um, you know what I'm talking about? I do. The big heavy cast yeah, iron or cast. But I usually use an open pan. Yeah. Um, if you're using open, yes. You don't want to do it early, you want to do it late. Mm -hmm. And soups and stews and things like that, you you can add a few herbs in the cooking, but you really want to add those in the last 20 minutes. Regardless of whether they're dry or mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but for us, you actually want to add much later because you lose a lot more drive is more concentrated. Can you tell the difference when you put those two together? So if you rub the, your thyme and your rosemary, you get a more complex flavor combination going on. And you'll feel the oil on your fingers too. All of these have mild oils. So next, so today I've got a mixture of margarine and calamint. So that's going to be my next component. And I'm going to have Alexis give you guys a little bit of that. And break down the leaves of that in your bowl. And I put a spice grinder out. Elizabeth, is it over there somewhere? It's Does it look like, like the coffee, coffee grinder? grinder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can use this as well, but I wouldn't use it until the day I was going to cook with it. I would leave most of my stuff whole leaf when you make it. So I wouldn't do what I'm doing today where I'm crunching it all up. I would leave the whole leaves together in my jar mm -hmm. um, after I had them dry. And then the day I was going to use them, and again, that's to just preserve your volatile oils. Okay. But if you do mix, I want you to smell it today because you're making a super for long. So if you do all that together, and the French hand rub, so they would be hand rubbing these herbs. And what was this again? Marjoram and calamus? If you're, depending on who you're talking to, it can have any number of things in it, fennel seed and all kinds of things. But I gave you the base recipe. Um, but if you get down to like Spain and some of those places, they'll put other things in this. Alexis, for an hour yesterday, did culinary lavender for us. Thank you, Alexis. <laughs> I came in and she just looked like she had a bad look on her face. <laughs> this is not fun. Let me have the zipper for a while. Yeah. She smells so good. <laughs> so I'm going to take, and I've got more than enough here. Um, I'm going to take some of that and put it in my mix. And you've got your components, and the two biggest components are thyme and rosemary. So the lavender is candy. And lavender actually goes a long way in cooking. And you'll see if I do a lavender with cocoa blend for my banana bread, I'll put it in the spice grinder. I have a coffee grinder dedicated to that. 
And I only use a tablespoon of lavender in the recipe of banana bread, that's plenty. So lavender does go a long way. Okay, and so you mean your this is a, actually a coffee grinder? You just dedicate it to herbs? Yeah, I just oh. dedicate it to herb grinder. Okay. And actually, I've got a Cuisinart that's bigger than that. Uh -huh. That if I'm doing a lot of grinding, I use that. Okay. And so this is your blend. And you can also add garlic. And we have wild garlic growing in the field, and we use the bulbeel tops, which I didn't show you. Can you find some? Grab a couple pieces. Um, you can use it. Yeah. Now, she said she's got a cashier full of garlic. Absolutely. It sells for six dollars a pound in New York. Roasted vegetables, chicken. Um, I said lamb the other day, and one of my friends who raises raises them said, "Shut your mouth." So, yeah. I can't say lamb, but so that's your that's your blend, and it's a real wow blend. It doesn't take much to. Make it good. Now, what do I do with this after I've got it like this? If you're going to use it on meat, or if you're going to put it, tuck it under the skin of the chicken, you're going to use some olive oil with it. And you're going to actually make kind of a pasty marinade. Hmm. And then you're going to use that to tuck under. Um, you can use as much or as little olive oil as, as you like to taste. Um, a heavier olive oil, but always use first cold press because a lot of olive oils are treated with hexane, so they actually go through a petroleum process to refine them. And if you use first cold pressed, it's not done that way. It's actually pressed out. And um, is so that easy to find locally? Easy to find. You pay a couple more dollars, but it's worth it. And so um, a medium flavored olive oil is what I like. I don't like a real heavy flavored olive oil. If you leave out the lavender, and I would leave out the lavender for this, you can also use this for a bread dip and mix it in with a little bit of Pacific sea salt or, or something. So you can actually do a dipping oil with this. With balsamic? Mm -hmm. Or with balsamic. Mm -hmm. And I have a dressing recipe that's out there by the vinegar. I make herb vinegars to order. I don't like to make them up ahead of time because I like them to be fresh. But I, I'll always make you one to order. And I sell them on the Augusta Locally Grown. Um, but I've got a good dressing recipe. That what are you going to put in your restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> You're making us really hungry. <laughs> but, uh, I do teas. <laughs> I do private teas, or I did last year. But actually, no, Mickey, I had to cancel on you guys because I had surgery just right well, here. We'll, we'll hold you to it right? next yeah, summer. That's right. That's good next summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, when I get that building, I keep saying that. Because when we do, it's going to be great. Yes. But so, you can get rich off this stuff now. You just have to go. It does have a usable garlic bulb at the bottom. But but the real prize to chefs is the top. Oh. And it's only like this for about a month. Thank you for getting that. And what you do is pop off the bulbeel. And you'll have little pieces of garlic. And of course, kids like to do this and throw them out in the field, and then you have hundreds more of these, right? Yeah. So that's why you've got so much, because you're cutting them. Because you're just cutting them down. down. And they're just <laughs> 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 If you raise cows to dairy cows, it's supposed to make the milk bad. So yeah. I know people try to keep it out of their fields, but it so is very So that pot on top, does it have to be dried? I mean, what I use it fresh like this, okay. but you can dry it. And I had some dry somewhere. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay. But this is, if you don't want to smell like garlic, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's a mild garlic. It's not real heavy. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I've got bulbs on the top of my chives, so what do you do? You can, little, you can use your chive tops. Mm -hmm. Okay. I there, it should it. always smell like an onion. There are a couple of the alliums that are oh, poisonous. Yeah. Okay. But they're the great big purple bulb alliums. They don't yeah, even yeah. really look like this garlic. One is it's but you know how people are, they'll think, oh, I can use that, well, I can use yeah. this too, and it, it is poisonous. This so, was, hmm. it's just, uh, it's first time this is real good to throw in the spaghetti sauce or mm -hmm. some yeah. rice yeah. Oh, wow. I've got a pot on my porch yeah, that that's has <laughs> a rosemary plant and basil. And, and I like the tops time. much better than and I do. Chives. Chives. So, and I go and cut it all the time. I've got chocolate mint. 
and they're fun to put in a vinegar. And you can wash them and put them straight in a, a vinegar like you use on collards, and it's really nice. Is thyme and lemon thyme the same thing? They are. They're all in the same family. I like um, I like lemon thyme and German thyme best. Some of the creepy crawly thymes are real dirty and in sandy soil. It's hard to get them clean. So is this a lemon? That's a lemon thyme. Mm -hmm. And um, we have um, enough herbs that if you actually want to make a full bottle. I'm going to stay here, and if you want, anybody wants to do that, I have enough herbs for you to do that today. But I wanted you to learn how to do it in the little demo, so you're welcome to take what you've got with you. And Alexis will give you another bag. You know what? We have a baggie bag. Let's do that. I think these would be about the right size. or in the cavity if you're roasting a whole bird you can do that too I just don't know how to tell. 